Let's talk about assuming why a command was given. Whenever we're learning about things, a lot of times we want to know why, and there are a lot of valid reasons for wanting to know why. With regard to the Torah, this is no different. A lot of times we may want to know why is it that this command was given, some specific command, or what is the underlying reason for a command. We may want to know why. But the problem is, most of the commands in the Torah do not say. Most of the commands are given without any sort of explanation. Now we are given a general explanation, general reasons why we are following the law in general. Things like pursuing life, pursuing life in the land of Canaan, seeking righteousness, doing what is good and right in his sight, and seeking what is good for us and for our children. There are these general reasons why we are doing these commands in general. But apart from a few commands, like the Zitzit command in Numbers 15, 37 through 41, most of the individual commands do not have explanations with them. And so if we really want to know why, that explanation is going to have to come from some other source. If it's not coming from the Torah text, because the Torah typically doesn't provide it, then it must come from either one of two sources otherwise. Either it's going to come from a legitimate prophecy in which it's coming from Elohim, which is probably not going to be very likely. Now, prophecy in general, especially legitimate prophecy, is not very common. What's going to be more likely is it's going to be coming from that second source, a person, a person's mind. Either it came from our own mind, or we heard something from someone else. Maybe someone a long time ago came up with this explanation, and it's just been passed on through the ages. Or maybe we heard it just as a rumor recently from someone that came up with it more recently or it's something that we came up with. One issue, one limitation, with anything that comes from a person's mind, is that it's going to be limited by their experiences. It's going to be limited by their awareness. No two people in the world have the exact same experiences. And no two people in the world have the exact same awareness about everything. And so any reason that we come up with is inherently going to be shaped by that awareness, by that experience, and by the base of knowledge that we personally have. And I want us to give two examples some consideration in thinking about this issue. The first one, you can probably think of a situation that might be kind of like this, where maybe someone saw you do something, or witnessed you do something, and then they went on to explain why you were doing it. And this might be, you were just doing that because you were mad, or you were just doing that because of some other motivation. And sometimes this reason that they give may be just completely off the wall from our perspective. Maybe they just really don't have the same information that we do. They don't know what we took into consideration in that situation. Or maybe there's some other reason that they want to assume according to their beliefs rather than what your true reasons were. So even amongst two adults, that may have similar experiences, one person may assume that you know, the other person had all of these reasons for the things they did, and they may just be completely wrong. They are being shaped by their personal experiences, by their beliefs, 
and by their awareness, they may not have even the adequate information to make that judgment. In another example I want to provide, maybe you've witnessed a child try to explain things to adults. So one situation that a child is going to be in is they're always going to have adults explaining things to them because they're children and they don't know that much about the world and they need to know how to operate in the world around them. And so adults are all the time trying to teach them things and explain things to them. And one thing that children do is mimic adults. And so sometimes they may try to explain things to adults. Maybe you've seen this before. One time I saw this going on was a child was explaining about horses. And we were looking outside driving down the road and she was saying, those animals out there, they cannot be horses because horses are never brown. Those animals clearly are not horses. And so it's kind of interesting to witness this because we know that they're working from very limited information. This could have been the case based on their awareness. That child may have never seen any horse that was brown or never actually attended to that. And she may have had these beliefs that that is the case, that horses are always some other color instead. Now, even though this is obviously incorrect to us, and we can look at that and see, well, a child obviously doesn't have the same awareness that an adult, had, adult does. A child doesn't have all of the same experiences that an adult does. But I want us to consider if we believe in a creator, one that created all things, I'm pretty sure that he has a much higher level of awareness than we do, even as adults. He's been around a lot longer than we have, and if he's the creator of all things, he's probably aware of a lot more things that we don't even know are something to even take into consideration. And obviously, he has perceived much more than we will ever perceive. And so for us to assume that we have the base of knowledge in our personal experience, in our personal awareness, to take everything into account and assume that we can conclude why a command was given and know all of the reasons behind it, in the case that the text says nothing, in the case that the text does not say this, I think is going to be kind of presumptuous of us. And one problem with assuming this is that it doesn't just stop at saying, well, I think the reason is such and such, and then that is its own independent thing that never affects anything else. It doesn't stop there, because once we start to believe that, or once we tell it to someone else and they start to believe it, it starts getting worked into our observance. It starts getting worked into how we perceive the Torah. It might prevent us from changing our mind about a command, because if we are very certain as to why a command was given, we may never take something into consideration some awareness of the Hebrew or awareness of the text that we didn't have before, it may not even enter into our consideration because we stop it at, that doesn't fit that belief. That doesn't fit that reason that I came up with in the past. We may cut ourselves off from learning the reality of the text, the reality of the command, because we are believing too much, believing these reasons that we've heard that aren't from the text, or that we came up with that aren't from the text. And it doesn't really matter how much we think we know the Torah in the process. If this is not actually justified with the Torah, if we're just saying, well, we have adequate knowledge of the text, we can make this judgment based upon our own logic, the thing is, if we are not actually giving citation to how it relates to the text, if we're not showing how the text shows this, 
then it's probably not based upon the text, not in full. It's probably based upon our beliefs, our awareness, and our experience, our limited awareness. So I want us to take this into consideration and beware these reasons for commands. Beware that we do not assume why a command was given, that we be cautious instead. If the Torah does not say, it would probably be presumptuous of us to think that we know, to think that we know why when the Torah does not say it. So let's be cautious about this. Let's be aware of what the text says and what the text does not say. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out some of my other videos on other Torah issues, and be sure that you stay in touch so we can continue this discussion. Thanks for watching. Remember the commands. Shalom.